right, hopefully you can see my me. I'm recording this on my phone. So hello to everybody out there. This is my South Bend restoration part three. It's actually like probably part four or five, but officially number three. And let's check out and see some of the things that I got done to this guy since last time, which is like a week ago. So let's check it out. All right, pardon my shakiness. Check that out. Got the plate finished up. Actually turned out pretty well, I think. Hopefully we're focusing in there. Um, check that out. I got my apron assembly on there. <clears throat> I was pretty stoked about that. And I got it. It took me a little while to get that guy on there, but I finally got it. A little finagling. And I was scared that uh, the bolts up here weren't going to line up with this apron, but it did because I was having some issues with some other spots in the lathe. But uh, if you guys remember last time, I was talking about this lever assembly right here, and I was going to show you this screw. Let's see what focuses. This guy right here, that screw is only, uh, they put them on these aprons with these lever style clutch assemblies. So that's the retainer screw. I mean, you can tap that if you want to do, but check out my other one here. Here is my original, and there's no hole there for a screw. What the? So that's why I went to a completely different direction and put the whole different uh, apron assembly on there. That one's still good, but I just saved myself a step in trying to um, trying to get that guy straightened out, and I lost my focus. So, another issue I was having was this guy right here. I had problems with this guy. Come over here, check out my dirty bench. There's the original cover, and like a fool, I knew this wouldn't work, but I tried to JB weld it. Didn't work. I knew that wouldn't work. I was JB welding something else, so I just said, what the hell, let's give it a shot. What I ended up doing here, so this cover right here is off another lathe. Go figure. When I had my, this cover here is off another lathe too. So I had the problem. I had my original cover here that was for this headstock. I had this cover which is off a different lathe. So I just stuck it on there hoping it'd work. And of course it didn't work. Because when they put these on I think they screw them or they drill them wherever they fit. And in this case my original cover didn't fit my new gear cover. So this guy was off and it would hit back here and I'd only be able to close it about that far. <sighs> so I was kind of bummed about that. So to try and fix it I took the other cover which matched this cover. So these two were together originally off another lathe. And I was like oh I'll just slap that on my headstock. No big deal. That yeah, didn't work either. What I ran into there is these holes here are drilled in different spots on different head um, stocks. Ugh. So I was, I was uh, frustrated to say the least. But luckily what ended up happening was I ovaled, no, no don't, don't freak out here, I ovaled these guys out just a little bit so I brought my hole in this way <coughs> and back here I brought this hole in this way so I was able to get, and these are just minimum just the minimum to get these both these screws in. So what that ended up doing was allowed me perfect room to fit that guy on there. So now I got a nice closing cover that lines up with everything. So I was pretty excited about that. I got that done tonight. Oh boy. Let's go back to this guy. I finally got my saddle painted a few days ago and I had all this other stuff finished. And if you can see here, I didn't spend, you know, some guys like polish the hell out of these things, but I just cleaned them up. I'm not a, I'm not a polish freak. I didn't bondo this thing. I'm not, this guy isn't going to be a show queen. Well, it probably will be, but, you know, I polished some of the handles up and stuff a little bit. I didn't go mirror crazy, but I polished them up. Check that out too. I got a little wobble in there. I was going to fix that, but, meh. Anyways. <clears throat> So I got this taper attachment off another lathe, and of course, I knew these guys are fit 
And there's a whole seven page sheet on fitting taper attachments to lathes. And being that I'm not a master scraper and I don't have most of the tools to do it, I said screw it. I don't have the clamp over there either. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this guy. Someday I'll get it fitted, but for now you can see uh, the pins, the alignment pins here sticking out. But for now what I'm going to do is just use it because these taper attachments use a special lead screw. And like a fool, before I realized that I needed that to use just the basic cover, I sold my original lead screw. So the only screw I was left with was my taper attachment screw and I didn't want to spend a hundred some bucks to make a new screw and I don't have the equipment. Uh, there's a gear in here that you gotta um, cut some gears. It's part of the shaft. I didn't have the equipment to make that. I mean I could but not easily. So there we go. This taper attachment, the only reason this guy is on there right now is so I can work my cross slide. And it of course is not lined up but it works really well. So I'm trying to hold the camera still for you guys. And then of course my uh, compound works really nice. Ugh. So someday maybe the guy that uh, Rick Ardenberg, the guy that did my bed here, maybe I'll have him if he's in town I'll have him swing by and he could scrape that guy in for me. Uh, I think the specs are half a one thousandths across that whole piece there every which way you can think of. So I'm not, I don't have the equipment and machine to, machinery to do that. Uh, I got my thread and dial on there, it's kind of cool. I still got to put my wipers on. And that's about it. Oh. So check that out, it's starting to look like a lathe again. It's kind of cool. And then I did get my tailstock assembly stripped down. I got a, a chunk off a of Logan lathe, lathe there, don't, don't mind that. It's like, uh, no, no Logan stuff. Anyways, um, South Bend stuff, you can see you scrape that in. That's the base of it. So it's all stripped down. i got to paint it now, and that'll be that. And then, one more thing I did. I got this guy all back together. Got my conduit kind of half-assed temporarily ran. I put a switch up here. This is a switch that came with a lathe. I'm not too pumped about it, but... Um, and I was in a real a rush the other day to get it on and get it going. So I had a chunk of aluminum I stuck on there, and it's I don't know. It's not really my favorite spot for it, but it'll work for now. I'll have to get that up out of the way. I don't like this. I hate that. This looks like I'm gonna switch this, but it it'll work for now. And then I got my cord running back there. Um, got it all wired up. And check this out. Some of you guys are gonna give me crap for this, but. Remember way back when I had a pulley. Look at that. JB Weld. Wah, wah, wah. Damn JB Weld people with their JB Welding and their non-proper non welding. <laughs> the story behind this guy is um, a while back I showed you guys this in one of my videos and it's just like a crack and it's such a tight crack that you couldn't move, well this spoke would never move in there. It was just like a fine little micro line crack and it was pretty, um, I don't know how to explain it. But anyways, I just thought I'd throw some JB Weld in there for now. And when I get time to actually do it, I'm gonna get some aluminum welding rod and a nice hot toasty torch and light that guy up, grind this out and redo it the correct way. But for now, this will work. Um, should I plug it in quick? You guys will have to hang on tight. Hang on, I'm gonna set you. I'm gonna set you by the rust knock here. You can sit there in uh, wondrous glory and and stare at the uh, south bend while I get in your way and plug this guy in in all its glory. Okay. All right. Let's throw the switch. Watch the power dim. So, this is like the most exciting thing you'll see on uh, YouTube today, so, nah, that's, that's not even funny, but, um, anyways, it runs really good, both ways, 
It's relatively quiet, so I'm kind of happy with that. So here we go. Kind of an update on the old South Bend. Oh, let's see. Hopefully, a few more things I got left to do. I'm going to paint that tail sock, get that guy on there. The more I look at this thing, I just threw that on there because it's part of it. I might take this guy off, paint it. I might leave this one until I actually get it scraped in. I'm not sure. I'm running out of time here. Probably paint this. I mean, I, I don't have time with school. Um, and I got to set my uh, shims on my bearing. I think I got to take maybe a, sh a shim off a side here and a couple shims off back here because I got a little play in there. Other than that, oh boy, she's damn near ready to go. I got my cabinet door and my drawers I got to paint yet too. They're starting to get chilly out, so I got to get to it. So there we go. Another update on the old uh, South Bend lathe. You don't you know. All right, so till next time. Stay safe on your machines. Shoot safe. And I forgot to tell you to be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Till next time. See you guys later. Thank you.